Hi there. So far we have seen these laws of chemical combinations. It is time to move ahead. Well, chemistry is a science of patterns and in early 1800s, one such pattern sparked immense curiosity. Well, gases when they reacted did so in simple volume ratios. This pattern was carefully observed and described by the French chemist Gay Lussac. According to this law, we know that gases combine or are produced in a chemical reaction in simple whole number ratios by volume provided all gases are at same temperature and pressure right and if you remember we applied this law in the formation of water vapor from hydrogen and oxygen so according to this law if we say that two volumes of hydrogen combines with one volume of oxygen we saw experimentally that two volumes of water vapor was formed but there was no explanation provided for this experimental observation it was in 1811 that avogadro an italian physicist stepped in with a revolutionary idea he proposed equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure should contain equal number of molecules or particles well at first glance it sounds straightforward isn't it but this one line explained all of gay lussac's mysterious volume ratios it kind of like provided a bridge between what we observe that is volume and what actually exists that is number of molecules so if i have to write this mathematically i can simply say volume is directly proportional to number of molecules where the small n signifies the number of molecules or number of particles okay now let's unpack this with this example okay imagine what we have here are three identical balloons one is filled with helium which is a monoatomic gas the other one is filled with nitrogen which is a diatomic gas and the third one is filled with methane which is a pentaatomic gas as there are 1 2 3 4 5 five atoms so let's just simply call it a polyatomic gas now if these balloons are all at the same volume held at the same temperature and pressure which one has more gas huh <laughs> the intuitive answer might be helium is lighter and smaller so maybe more of it fits in the small space right or perhaps you're thinking methane is heavier and bulkier surely fewer of those molecules fit in a balloon of the same size but avogadro's law tells us otherwise all the three balloons contain the same number of gas molecules regardless of their mass or size because the volume of a gas like i said is directly proportional to the number of molecules not their size or type this was a turning point in how we understood gases for the first time scientists had a molecular explanation for gay lussac's volume ratios now let's return to our example of water formation right So here we learn that how two volumes of hydrogen and one volume of oxygen combine to form two volumes of water vapor. This is what we found experimentally, and this can now be explained beautifully using Avogadro's idea. So according to Avogadro, two volumes of hydrogen gas contain how many molecules? We can say that it contains two n molecules. Similarly one volume of oxygen contains let's say n molecules of oxygen they combine to form two volumes of water vapor which contain 2n molecules of water vapor right so this explains how we get 2 is to 1 is to 2 volume ratio corresponding to the molecular ratio right because like we understood v is directly proportional to n according to the avogadro's law Well now that you have understood volume is directly proportional to the number of molecules at the same temperature and pressure I have a question for you let's try to apply this law here okay say i experimentally give you the volume ratio of the formation of ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen to be 3 is to 1 is to 2 and i tell you that number of molecules though let me tell you number of molecules will be way more but this is a hypothetical situation i'm giving you so that you can apply the law better so here you can see that i have four molecules in this container 
Now, I've also given you the experimental volume ratio of 3 is to 1 is to 2. So, if you know the number of molecules of ammonia, can you find out the number of molecules of hydrogen and nitrogen that would have reacted to form these four molecules of ammonia? Let's see if you can apply Avogadro's law. Pause the video and do try this question. Hmm, I hope you could do it. So, we know volume is proportional to the number of molecules as per Avogadro's law. So, if the volume ratio is 3 is to 1 is to 2, so is the molecular ratio. So, molecular ratio is also going to be equal to 3 is to 1 is to 2. Now, number of molecules of ammonia are 4. So, that means it's just a double of 2. So, that means the number of molecules of hydrogen should also be the double of this number. That is 3 into 2. 6 molecules should be there of hydrogen. And 1 into 2. That means 2 molecules of nitrogen should be there. Let's check. There you go. We could apply Avogadro's law very well. You can see if four molecules of ammonia are in the container, that must would have been formed after six molecules of hydrogen reacted with two molecules of nitrogen. That's when we will get four molecules of ammonia. Now that we know how to apply Avogadro's law, let's take a look at a question. The question says, what would be the ratio of total number of atoms present in 10 litres of oxygen and 5 litres of methane at the same temperature and pressure? Total number of atoms we have to find. Pause the video and do try this question. Okay, I hope you could do it. So, we have oxygen and we have methane. Oxygen is 10 litres and methane is... 5 liters as per the question, right? Let's first see the volume ratio. What's the volume ratio? It is 2 is to 1. And the same ratio has to be of the molecule. So, I can say the molecule ratio is going to be equal to the same 2 is to 1. Now, remember, this is the molecular ratio and not atomic ratio. How many atoms are there in oxygen? 2 atoms, okay. And how many atoms are there in methane? 4 and 1. 5, 5 atoms. So, we had to find the total number of atoms present and the ratio of the total number of atoms present. So, we can say for oxygen, if I am talking about the atoms, then I have to multiply 2 into 2, that is 4 and for methane, I have to multiply 5 into 1, that is 5. So, 4 is to 5, that is option number C becomes the answer to this question.